What's up, Flash Mob? So I went and got an iPhone 14 Pro Max. I wanna talk about this phone from a cinematographer's perspective. One thing I'm trying to do this year is always keep something on me that I can create content with. And from what I've been seeing this far, this might actually be a tool that I can use for paid work as well. Stick around and find out why. Run the intro. time here welcome my channel is all about helping you turn your passion into a paycheck whilst taking you along my filmmaking journey if that's the kind of thing that you're into make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos so just a bit of a backstory for those of you who don't know me I'm known for getting a new phone every year and when I got the iPhone 13 Pro Max I was like wow finally a phone I can hold on to for a few years because it was actually that good it had a great camera for both photos and videos great battery life for my annoyingly busy lifestyle, and just an overall good phone. So why, why? Why the hell did I go and get an iPhone 14 Pro Max? The first thing that I'll admit is I definitely have a sickness. I just love having the latest and greatest phone. I'll raise my hand, I'll admit it, yep, that's me. But aside from that, there were a few features that really started eating away at my mind over the last few weeks. The first feature was always on display. This seems like a simple feature, but it was something that I loved on my Android devices. Being able to glance over at your phone and see anything that was going on was great. On previous iPhone models, you would literally have to touch the phone to see if there were any new notifications. Always on display is especially good with iOS 16 updates because it allows you to add widgets to your lock screen with information that you care to see at a glance, such as your battery life, the weather, or appointments you might have. So yeah, this to me is a big W for the iPhone 14 Pro Max and it's something I will be using all the time. The next thing on the list is the Dynamic Island. When I first saw the Apple Keynote and they introduced Dynamic Island, I was like, wait, wait, what? So instead of trying to hide the notch, y'all decided to own it and make it a feature. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, no problem. I thought it was gimmicky, but clever at first glance. Then I started to understand how it can actually be useful in everyday scenarios. Things like getting phone calls, letting you know when your battery is low, connecting your AirPods, Face ID, AirDrop, and much more. One feature I particularly like is when I'm listening to music and seeing the information on the island and quickly being able to long press and pull up a mini menu or tap and go directly into the app. And if you have multiple applications using the island, it splits into two separate islands that you can again interact. For me, it's cool and clever and something that adds a little bit more convenience. Is this something that's gonna change the way you look at a cell phone? Probably not. But if you have it, you're gonna use it. The one downside I see with the Dynamic Island is the fact that you will be touching the front facing camera area a lot. So you will need to consistently wipe the screen if you don't want to take crappy photos with your front camera. When more apps update and add island function, I can see this becoming something very dope. If you're still here, go ahead and hit that like button for your boy. And if cameras and content is something that you're into, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is the cameras. Something I've been trying to do more of is create content to post on social media. More so of what I'm doing when I'm working or if I'm inspired to try and teach you guys something or make you laugh. And the easiest tool I can use to get that vertical resolution in 4K is my phone. So yeah, might as well start using it, right? I was always a fan of the cinematic mode on the 13, but it was limited to 1080p resolution. But now on the 14, you can do 4K in 24 or 30 frames, which gives it a lot more use in the creative space. You also get a 48 megapixel camera on the 14 Pro Max. This is where things can get interesting because the pictures I take in ProRes can be colored and upscaled like you would on a DSLR. And in most cases to the untrained eye, you're really not gonna be able to tell the difference. One other thing that I was kind of interested in, but I don't think I'm going to be using a whole lot, is action mode. This is basically like putting a gimbal into the phone and allowing you to get super smooth footage with your bare hands. The issue is it's only in 1080p. For me, personally, I'm still going to be using the phone with the DJI Osmo 5 and get the best resolution at 4K and stable footage. But in a pinch, I can see where something like this could be useful. Realistically, my phone is the one camera I'm always gonna have on me. So the way I see it is, why not just update and have the best that Apple offers on me? 
If we're being honest for the average user, upgrading to this model probably isn't very necessary. So don't go out and spend all your money on it. But yeah, man, I updated, I like it, and we'll just have to wait and see what the 15 offers and if this is something we'll be doing all over again. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like button for me. And if you're here for the second, third, fourth time, just subscribe. I mean, you obviously like what I'm doing, just subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys, and remember to look, learn, and share. Take it easy, guys. Peace.